Right, I think we are live. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, if you can hear me and see me okay, please let me know uh, in the chat if everything is working. My name is Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules, and tonight I'm going to be doing a live tutorial and playthrough of Agamonia tutorial scenario number two. Now, some of you uh, may not have seen tutorial scenario number one. I did a few stream of that, uh, a few streams of that, a few weeks ago actually. Uh, I think it was over Spiel Digital. Yeah, Spiel, Spiel Digital did a few streams of Agamonia tutorial scenario number one. This is tutorial scenario number two. It is building on number one. If you haven't seen number one, don't worry. We're going to have a bit of a recap on the rules. Sound looks fine. Audio looks fine. Excellent. Right. So that's working. Um, we're doing the three player game of this tonight. I'm joined by uh, Andy and Sid from Polyhedron Collider and Ryan from Man vs. Meeple. They've all played through tutorial, tutorial scenario number one previously. Uh, so we're going to jump in with tutorial number two. This is a game which is going to come to Kickstarter uh, early next year. Uh, it's going to have a whole bunch of scenarios in it, but the first three scenarios are tutorial scenarios that will take you step by step through learning how to play the game. Tutorial scenario number one was uh, just introducing the core mechanisms of the game and tutorial scenario number two is going to take it a step further. So, without further ado, I'm going to go over to the Discord channel and I'm going to say hello to uh, Andy and Sid from Polyhedron Collider. Good evening. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Now, how much do you remember from last time? Oh, good. <laughs> uh, and Ryan's joining us as well from Man vs. Maple. Hi, Ryan. Yeah. Hey, everybody. How much do you remember? having a lot of fun that's for sure right okay so um one of the things that i did this afternoon and i just realized i had um i, I had my audio off from you so apologies apologies for that they heard they heard ryan but they didn't hear andy and sid right it's all sorted now oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that i did this afternoon is i actually had a run through of this scenario with two players which had never played tutorial scenario number one okay and that was a test just in case you turned up tonight and said we don't remember anything at all <laughs> so uh yeah we, we we should be okay i'm glad you remember some of it okay so this scenario takes place right after scenario number one so i'm going to do a little bit of a previously on agamonia uh the three heroes were basically in the town of ambergate uh one night in the tavern when it started flooding the whole city started flooding this strange gate um you know there was all this water coming out of it very very weird stuff going on uh and the three people had to rush around the tavern uh save a cute little pet repair a bridge rescue a toggle from the stables and basically do as much as they can uh, as much as they could before the flood water rose okay at the end of that scenario uh they were basically on the roof of the tavern as the water level was continuing to rise um and then this very strange person with this uh flying like carriage came along, picked them up, spoke to them and said, oh, well, you, you happen to be going the same way I'm going to, which is Runedale. Why don't you come with me? And that's where scenario one ended. So, yeah, scenario two takes place right after that. Uh, and let me just get this up here. Yes, right. OK, so the introduction, scenario number two, Road to Runedale. You fly from the flooded city of Ambergate with the mysterious Shantor three birds in her strange wagon, Birdie as far as the Agura crystal can power it. After you land, the wings are folded and the calm and pleasant Togrel, legionary, climbs out of the wagon to pull it. The road through the dense wisp tree forest is well paved and the sun is shining. You lack your belongings, but there is food and a few basic tools in Birdie's trunk. Every night while camping, Shantor tells you about her quest. She is looking for beacons built by the ancients millennia ago. She hints that she is the last person who can do what must be done to save Agamonia. When asked for more details, she winks and promises to tell you when you get to Runedale. On the third day, you see a red light emanating from the horizon ahead of you. Legionary whimpers in fear as Shantor has to calm him. A great evil is afoot. I must go ahead to investigate, Shantor says solemnly, and shows you a stone with odd markings. Protect this runic plate. Make sure Legionary pulls Birdie and the plate to yonder hill. You grab the tools from the trunk and encourage Legionary to move on. He needs to stay on the road, but you are free to roam the wilderness. Not that it looks very inviting with the razor sharp uh, slave thorns and the steep cliff on the right. As Shantor runs off, you have an ominous feeling that something will go horribly wrong if you are delayed. Okay, 
So a quick recap from last time. This is a cooperative game. You're going to be playing the game over a series of rounds. At the end of each round, a fate card will be turned over. But unlike the previous scenario, you aren't on a time limit. So if you remember the previous scenario, there was a limited number of fate cards and the scenario ended when you ran out of fate cards. This is not the case here. There's 20. I'm, I, I think you'll be done by then, okay? <laughs> Um, what's going to happen in each round is the first thing you will do is you each of you will select an action. So I'm just going to zoom in on Andy's player board here. You've got three actions now to choose from. In the previous scenario, you only had two. You all had focus and you had extra maneuver. All characters have those two actions by default, but each of you now has a third action, which is different for each of you. Okay. Which is generally an attack. Now, Torax, yours is a melee attack. Um, uh, Venia, yours is a melee attack as well, your shadow strike. But over here, Ryan, yours is actually mm -hmm. a magic attack with range. So yeah. the other two have to be in the same area as somebody else. Um, you don't need to be. Now, the other thing as well is if it's a magic attack, you don't physically need a weapon to attack. You can actually just attack because it's your own magical skills. But the other ones a melee attack or a ranged attack, you actually need a weapon to be able to attack. Now, thankfully, Torax has got a fist of Torax, so you actually just punch people. Um, Venia, you don't have an actual weapon, but you do have this hook and rope that you got out of the back. And if you look at the hook and rope at the bottom, it's got a sword icon with a minus one. That means you can use it as if it was a weapon, but it's actually not very good. It's, it's kind of like an improvised weapon. So it'll do one less damage. What's okay. going to happen is you're each going to select an action at the start, and obviously it's fully cooperative, so you can talk to each other about what it is that you want to do. Then we will draw an initiative card. Now, last time the initiative was fixed. It was always the same initiative. But now, if I just look through these cards, you will see that it is now different. Generally speaking, red goes before blue, I think, and then blue goes before green. Generally speaking, but that's not always the case. And this time you are going to be fighting enemies and the enemies initiative will sometimes be before you, sometimes, sometimes after you. Um, but the initiative card is drawn after you've chosen your actions. OK, then what we'll do is we'll step through the initiative order with the characters taking turns. And when the monsters appear, the monsters will be taking turns. And on your turn, you do one action, which you'd previously decided what it was. And you can also do one manoeuvre. Now, you don't have to declare the manoeuvre until you're about to take it, but it's one action and one manoeuvre, remembering that one of the actions is actually called extra manoeuvre. And if you do that, you get to do two manoeuvres. At the end of the round, we flip over a fake card and then we, and then we go again. Um, items, you've, you've carried forward the stuff that you left the previous scenario with. So, uh, yeah, Andy, you've got this letter here. Um, mm -hmm. Sid, you've got this because you, you calmed the toggle, so you've got this particular card here. Uh, Ryan, you've got this Star Lotus, which you got for, I think, rescuing the Grick in the cellar. Yes, that's um, right. And you've all got a little bit of gold as well. Um, and you've got these items that were in the back of the thing. So, yeah, Torax has got a shovel, you've got the hook and rope, and you've got a hand axe over there. Right, let's skip to the next page and see what is next. So we've done all of the setup. That's all done. Uh, items gamed. Right, we've got some special rules for you. Now, last time, you may remember on the map, each of the areas had little dots in it. It wasn't really relevant in the previous scenario because you kind of split up and you went all over the place. In this scenario, it's going to be, it's going to be more relevant. The number of dots in each area indicates not quite the number of characters, but it's the number of size of characters. So each of you is size one, okay? Therefore, you can all be in the same area at the same time. But if you look at some of the other areas, we have like two dots and some of the other areas only have one dot. So you need to be careful with that. You can move through areas temporarily exceeding their capacity, but you cannot end your movement, uh, which would exceed the capacity, okay? While we're talking about capacity, I'm now going to talk about this. This is the toggle and the wagon. And your objective is at the end of a round, if this is here, you win. OK, that is your objective. Now, this has a size of three. So that means two things. First of all, you need to be you, you can't 
have more than one of you in the same area as it at the end of your movement. But also, it can't move through any areas that don't have three dots, and it can't even move through them. So if you look at the map, you'll notice the road is basically threes and fours, and everywhere outside of it is kind of twos and ones. So that means that this is going to move round. Now, you move this, it can move once per round on any of your turns, and it moves two spaces. Okay? But there is a special rule, and it cannot, if there is an enemy, if, if there is an enemy on the board, it cannot move to closer than three spaces from the enemy, because the Togrel at the front is actually quite scared of them. Okay? So they're the special rules uh, for that. Scenario end conditions, basically, the quicker you do it, the better the result. Um, you will get the best result if you do it in 10 rounds or less, uh, or fewer. Um, right, okay, we've put that on there. Tutorial one reminders. So, spending vitae, we'll go through that later because I think you remember that. Actions, maneuvers, story points. Do you all remember how story points work? Yep. Yes. Okay. We have you will notice, right on us, right? Yeah, exactly. You will notice you are already in range of these two. They are going to be revealed on the first player's turn. So whoever takes the first turn will reveal those cards. Um, right. So the first thing is to all select hero actions. Okay. What do you all want to do? Uh... And again, feel free to talk amongst yourselves. You may want to look at the map. Well, because we've really got no enemies currently. We've got some red lines here. <laughs> I, my, my vote would be for it. I, I assume you can't move through red lines. That's the. That's you cannot the move through red lines. Yeah. Okay. I would therefore argue at the moment it's probably best to start exploring, get a bunch of story cards, yeah. and then decide what to go from there. Yeah. Um. It might not be the worst idea to focus just in case one of these things ends up being something that one of us needs to you know, roll for. Um, so I might do focus mm -hmm. just in case. So I think I've got reasonable movement, so I might take the extra maneuver. Yeah, it's uh, only Torax that's really some, slow. Okay, yeah. if you do that then, Sid, because I, I can only yeah. move one square because I'm quite slow. Also, the yep. important thing um, to, to think about, Paul, I'm sorry, you said the general order is always red, blue, green? Not always. Okay, but you could kind of assume that it might be yeah. red, blue, green? Yeah. Okay. Um, I can't remember what focus does now. Is that the focus increases magic? all of your attributes by one? Yeah, for for the whole round. So if you remember, some of the tests that you have to do will either be might, agility, or will, yeah. and that basically gives you an extra an extra one dice for each of those. I think that's not a bad idea. I will also focus then. Okay, right. So once everybody's chosen an action, we draw the initiative card. Uh, now, you'll notice on this initiative card, we have all of the heroes going first, a so red, blue, then green. There is an extra icon next to it. For this scenario, those extra icons are ignored. They will come in, I think, during tutorial three. So it's whoever chose a red action first, which is, I believe, That's Sid. me, I think, yeah. Okay, okay. So remember, it is an action and a maneuver in any order you want to. But for you, it's two manoeuvres, because you've chosen the... Two manoeuvres. Yeah, yep. you've chosen the extra manoeuvre. So which manoeuvre uh, would you like to do first? So I was going to do the walk manoeuvre. Okay. You move two spaces. Uh, but remember, the first that... thing we do yeah. is we're going to reveal the story cards. Yeah. So I'm going to reveal E first. So for those who um, didn't see scenario one, each scenario has a big deck of story cards. And the story points basically tell you which card to take from the deck. And the number is how far you need to be away from that story point when you first draw the card. So here this is E0. So because the heroes are in that space, we're going to draw card E. And the narrator, which happens to be me, reads it out. The road to Roondale is in relatively good condition, although beset by sharp slave thorn bushes. As you approach a bend, you see a tree fall down with a crash. Could this have been just an accident? You will have to clear the road so that Legionary and Birdie can continue along it. And then because you are in the same area as this card, you can now flip it over if you want to. I'm assuming you do, but I'll, I'll let you do that, Sid. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we'll uh, might as well flip it over, see what's okay. going on. Yeah. Right, so we got two extra rules, the dangers of the wild. If you look at the map, you'll notice some of the areas <clears throat> have little blood drop symbols in them, okay? Every time you move into one of those areas, you have to do a reactive test. Now, reactive tests are new. We didn't have reactive tests last time. Um, sorry, a reactive ability check. What it means is every time you move into one of these areas, you will take two damage, but then what you do is you make a reactive agility check and every success you get reduces that damage by one. Now, reactive ability checks are on the blue dice rather than the red dice. Slightly different symbols on them, okay? But obviously, the characters with the higher agility are safer to move through the areas with the blood drops. Right, the second special rule for this scenario is anybody who is on the same space as uh, the Togrel can try and do this ability check to calm the Togrel. The person with the Togrel Whisperer card gets a plus two. Now, what that means is you get two automatic successes, not two extra dice. But if you <laughs> succeed, it means you can ignore that can't move within three of an enemy rule. So you are able, if you wanted to, uh, to try and calm the Togrel and get it to move, move further. Right, so special rules for this scenario. The next one I'm going to read is scenario card H, which is this one. Right, this is the cliff wall. So the road is shadowed by a tall cliff on its right side, too steep to climb and riddled with slave thorns. However, the cliff wall seems slightly less sheer here. Now, this can only be flipped over if you are on the same space as H. Okay, which is Lawless. here. So if somebody was to move to here, if you wanted to, you could flip this over. Right, anyway, that's the setup done with the extra cards. So, Sid, your go with your movement. Okay, so I was going to move Vinia two steps forward to investigate story point G, if I okay. may. Okay. Right. Uh, so that's one, two. Yeah, so one, two. So you've gone... You haven't gone within one of F, but you have gone within one of G. Okay, so let's have a look at card G. Is this one. Uh, right, the fallen wisp tree completely obstructs your passage. You can go round it, but legionary and birdie cannot. The tree looks heavy, but somehow you must move it. Before that, you have to cut its roots off. So you can flip this card over because you are within one of G. Hey, you. Yes, please. There you go. Oh, sorry. Right. Oh, sorry. So, complicated job. So, if you are within one of G, you can perform this check, but only if there is an X marker on story card J. So, you know that you're going to have to do something with story card J before you can do this card. Oh, now, God. Story card J is here. Away. Okay. Okay. Right. Yep. So that is your first manoeuvre done. What would you like to do with your yep. second manoeuvre? Uh, I was going to ask you a question about what the chevrons mean. Yeah, the, the chevrons, chevrons are for line of sight when we come to ranged attacks. Okay, so not for right now. Um, not for now. In yeah. which case, I will try... I can't move through red, that's right. Correct, it? yeah. To go here, mate, to go round. Yeah, so I'm going to have to move to that one, to that one... Yeah, can I move to that second arrow? Can I move to here, Paul? Uh, which which manoeuvre are you choosing for your second uh, one? Oh, sorry. Uh, just a, a regular walk. Okay, two so spaces. you can move two spaces. So you can go one to here. But we're going to interrupt that movement and draw card F. Oh, right, okay. It's always yes. the first character that gets all the cards. <laughs> right. Legionary smells trouble. The Togrel Legionary sniffs at the slave thorn bush in the ground. Near the bush, the wisp tree's densely needled branches are stuck in the lush undergrowth and resist any attempts to lift the tree. If they were cut off or the bushes dug out, the massive tree would be easier to move. So yeah, basically the tree's fallen over and it's got kind of tied up here. So you're not going to be able to move the tree or lift the tree until you've actually done something with this bit as well. And we can flip this card over and here we go. I'm going to put this card here. Right, now, one of the really important rules from last time is that any card with an ability check on, you can do once per turn, and it doesn't cost you any action. So you can do this now, as you can have a free test to try and do this. 
basically you need to do a mite test. The difficulty is four. If you have a hand axe, you get an extra, you get free two successes. If you've got a shovel, you get one success. And if you're successful, you put an X marker on this card, the maximum of three. X markers on this card will give you a bonus on this card. But remember, you can't do this card until you've done something with Jay. So do you want to do something with this as you're going past? Uh, well, if it's a free action, I it, can it's try. Free. Yeah. The thing is, I've only got two might and I've got nothing no, to help. But you me, might so as well. There's I... no penalty for failing. All right. OK. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, then. Uh, so you so roll two dice. red dice. Oh, sorry. Two. Yeah. <laughs> try that again. Oh, we'll get rid of the one that's cocked. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There. So uh, two, two successes. Um, you don't get any bonus successes because you've not got a hand axe or a shovel. So you didn't do it, but that's fine. It was a free thing. OK. And then you've still got one uh, movement point left, I think. And then I'll, I'll move. I think I can move to this one. You can move to there. Yeah. There. Yeah. That doesn't trigger any other story points. Okay. So your go is done. Right. Yep. So now we go down the initiative. It is blue next. Who's blue? Yes, that is me. And I have a hand axe. Okay. So maybe I want to try that. But I also am kind of interested in that cliff wall. Mm hmm. Oh. Uh, I would say you go, go for the cliff wall, uh, Ryan, because yeah, I've got quite a might of three with a shovel so yeah then i will use my first uh action to move over here my first maneuver to move over here are you walking or running i'm just gonna walk okay so your first one goes to there which means you can flip this over yeah so i will do that yep okay so oh, after a closer look climbing. it seems like some agile might have a chance to climb the cliff wall here to higher ground so if you wanted to, you could spend a movement point, do an agility difficulty check, agility check with difficulty five. If you had the hook and rope, it would be plus two. And if you succeed, you can basically move from there to here. Hmm, I'm not sure if I'm not sure what the benefit of that might be for us. Um, do you guys think there's a reason to even try to like sneak around the outside of the? Um, well. Uh, there's no blood, well, there's very few blood drops, and there's basically a path that goes, you know, essentially all the way around here. Yeah, all the way down to J. Yeah. I think, I think yeah. that's what it is, isn't it? It's just shortcut to J. Yeah. Or you know what? to J. I don't have the uh, fancy hook, um, but I will, let me give it a try. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so you're spending your second movement point. Your agility is... Two. two. <laughs> but I get one extra from focusing. Oh, you focused, so I, didn't you? Yeah, so it's I three dice. Three. Here we go. All right, and I need five total. Yep. Right now, <laughs> so this That's icon here, yeah, this is no successes, but you can buy up to two successes for each of these dice. So you've rolled zero, but you could, if you wanted to, buy five by spending the buy tape. It will cost me five, though, right? It will cost yeah. you five. I'll yeah. Which is a lot. You know what? Let's do it. I'm just going to okay. do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you are now here. And yeah. because this, this area has a blood drop, you now need to make a reactive uh, ability check. So you need to roll. Now, you're focused. So you're rolling three blue dice. Yeah, reactive, reaction is the blue dice. And you're taking two damage minus however many successes you roll. Now, focus doesn't allow me to roll any other die with this, right? Uh, focus, yeah, I think. It now, although add focus red says die the... red die, I thought I thought focus affected the blue die as well. I'm just going to check the rule book on that because sure, you, sure. I thought it was. Uh... Let me just check. Uh, reactive ability checks. Uh, unless somebody watching in the chat knows the answer. If they do, then that's great. Reaction, here we go. Uh, Phil said it used to be blue, but you changed it. Okay, so that's why ah. I'm remembering it incorrectly. So it looks like focus only affects your active checks, not your reactive checks. Gotcha, so, so I get to roll my, my uh, dexterity, which is two, or my lightning yeah. reflex, which is two dice. Two okay. dice, yeah. All right, success. right now this is one success 
This is actually a special symbol, but in this scenario, it's just one success. So that's good. You don't take any damage. Yay. All right, so that was my uh, walk maneuver. Yep. I walk. And that was, second... a free... that was a free check, right? That was a free check. Well, it was a free check, but it cost a movement point. So that's you went out there, uh, and that is the end of your turn. So well, Andy... walk, walk gave me two movement points to spend, right? Yeah, but one was to go to here. Yeah. And then this card, the spot for climbing, says you may spend a movement point to do yeah, the yeah. test. And that was so my that second, was the second one, which got so into here. Yeah. I forgot I didn't do extra maneuvers, so I don't get another yeah. maneuver. So I'm done. Yeah. Right, Torax. Okay, so I can. I might as well move to mm -hmm. here because I need so move you, one space. Are you walking or running? Oh, I'm just walking. Okay, so that's just one. Slow and plodding. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then I can use my focus to do this, um, this test hard at work because I, I have a shovel. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. I you've got a might of three, plus one for your focus is four. So it's four dice. But because you've got a shovel, you actually get a plus one. So it's, again, it's plus one on the re result, not plus one mm -hmm. on the dice. So I need three successes on my three dice. You need dice. three successes oh, four on four dice. dice. There you go. I'll give you so, some extra dice. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Wow. The dice king. Okay, we'll get rid of these two out of the road so we don't get confused. And we will roll these bad boys. Okay, Oof. so you've got two. And you can buy an extra one if you want to. I will buy an extra yeah. success. Is that two Vitae? One. One for one. one. one so th one. this here allows you to buy up to two extra. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you know how to move one off? That's it. Yes, yeah, just, just drag quick. Right. So what we do is we put an X marker on this card. So each character can only attempt to check on each card once per turn. Uh, and this card can only have three X's on it. Right. Mm. I think we're all done. That's it, I, think. I think that's it. Yeah, end of the round. So I'm going to discard a fake card. In this scenario, these numbers don't mean anything, but they will later on. Uh, and now we go to round two. So again, all choose which action you want to do. I'm minded to carry on flipping cards. What do you guys reckon? Yeah. I'm just going to yeah. follow that path we talked about. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to basically stay around this area and clear this tree out of the road. All right, so I'll, I'll stick with extra maneuver for now then. And I will stay with my focus. Okay, Ryan, what are you planning to do? Because I don't think you can well, get to Jay in one... No, maneuver. but I'm going to make my way as far as that way as I can. Mm-hmm. So I'm you'll, using my you'll extra maneuver. Yeah, so you'll, you'll get there with two maneuvers. Yeah. Okay, right. Now, I was going to flip over an initiative card. However, have a look at the initiative card from last round. It's got the shuffle on it. So we that is so one of the cards in there, or maybe more, has got a shuffle. So what we do is we put that in, and we draw a new one. Oh, it's the, it's the same one. one. There are definitely well. different cards in here, trust me. Right, so it's red first, which is you, Sid. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so I'll walk as my maneuver okay and i'll move into a location with b yeah. story so that pointer. triggers the b story card hey paul i have a quick question what does the extra maneuver plus symbol here mean uh so the icon there uh the plus with the circle with the arrows in that's yeah. the symbol for maneuver so does so, that mean you get just an extra maneuver like, yeah basically the text the text and the icon mean the same thing okay Right, card B. Venorian skitterers. You hear the sound of rattling leaves and then of sharp feet rattling on the cobblestones. Soon enough, enormous insects appear on the road and move towards you, their mandibles snapping angrily. They are Venorian skitterers and they are coming your way. Okay, so what we've got is we've got our first bad guys. These are. Thanks a lot, Sid. The, yeah, it's, it's also. Sid's Welcome, Sid's mate. <laughs> now, because this is round two. Uh, yeah, take a number of Skithrim miniatures equal to the number of discarded fake cards plus one. So that's two. Uh, now the Skithrim bag, where did I put it? Is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one here. Uh, if it was uh, round 
uh, three, we'd, we'd put one here. If it was round four, we'd also put one here. Now there's going to be another skitter arriving at the end of this round, which is going to come on here, and then one at the end of the next round, which is going to come on here. I'm just going to put those there for now. Uh, each of these has got a number on it. Uh, they will activate in numeric order, but I, I did shuffle the bag. And then what we do is we're going to reveal this encounter card here. And this gives you the stats of the skitterers. So the top left is their initiative value. That indicates when they will go in the round, but they don't go on the same round that they spawned. So they're not going to move this round, okay? Below that is how many health they've got. So two times the number of heroes, three heroes. Each one of those has got six health. We're going to track the damage on the actual figures themselves. And when one's taken six, it goes back in the bag. Uh, below that is an ability called provoke. What that means is if you move out of an area that contains a skitterer, you take one damage and that can't be prevented. So be careful of that. And over on the right hand side are the three different things that it might do in each round. If you look at the initiative card, the, the, the letter tells you which one of the three things it would do. But remember, it's not doing anything this round. OK, so that's the skitterers. I'll explain combat uh, in a minute. Enemies in combat. We've done that. We've done that. Yeah. So there we go. So, yeah, so combat is essentially resolved in a similar way to other checks. Uh, Torax and Vinia, you have melee attacks, so you have to be in the same area in order to be able to attack them. Um, Ryan, your character has a magic ranged attack, so you just yeah. need to be within range three. You roll the dice as indicated next to the attack, and that does damage to the character. Now, uh, Andy, Torax, is using the Fist of Torax, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, Sid, when you use the hook and rope, you actually deal one fewer damage because it's not a real weapon. Uh, and Ryan, your your attack is not using the axe; it's actually using your own right. magic attack. So, it's it's two dice. Um, the damage that you deal will get removed from the opponent, uh, and when they've taken six, they're removed. Now, there's a few things to take into account, uh, so, and this is more for you, Ryan. Ranged attacks. You need to be able to draw a line from somewhere within your area to somewhere within their area. If it goes through a friend, the damage is reduced by one because it's obstructed. And oh, also, okay. if, if you're attacking into an area that contains any of your friends, uh, that's also obstructed. So it doesn't mean you'll accidentally hit them. It just means you'll deal slightly fewer. Uh, you'll deal one fewer damage. Um, there's also line of sight rules for the elevation changes if, if we get to that point. Um, when they attack you, it's actually quite interesting the way that it's done in this game because it isn't that they roll their attack, it's they are going to do a fixed amount of damage and you try to defend against it in the way that the reactive checks worked. So you, when they attack you, you make the roll and what you're doing is you're trying to prevent them from damaging you. Um, but we'll see that we'll see that later on when they get into you. Uh, you can see from their card that they are going to move either uh, one or two towards you each time they move, and nothing's going to change that. They are going to do one of those three things. There's not going to be any like surprise event card or anything like that. So you can kind of get an idea of of what it is that they're doing. Anyway, that was interrupting your first maneuver, Sid. <clears throat> uh, no, that's okay. Um... Right, so a lot to take in there, but let's yeah. go and get some more to take in by moving again and activating story point D. So, D is... And C one. as well. Oh, and C, yeah. C as well. Did we miss C? We did. Uh, no, 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 we're just activating it now. Just now. Okay, right. Which one do you want to do first? Uh, D. That looks D. exciting. Right, okay. I'm going to put D. I'm going to put it over here. So, D is... In the slave thorn's shadow the cliff is lower here and there is a huge slave thorn bush growing in the cliff above you its large spiky leaves almost reach the road if you are within zero of this card you can examine it further which you are so if you want to flip that over yes please yeah right so basically there's a ladder you realize you might try to use the slave thorn leaves as a ladder of sorts but you would have to be very careful lest the sharp edges hurt you while climbing. So very similar to what Ryan did. If you were on this space, you could spend a movement point, do an agility check, and if successful, you can move from there to there. Okay. okay. Right, yep. the next one is card C. 
which is a blight cap mushroom. A magnificent magnet tree glows with a magical light. And underneath it, you spot a purple mushroom with a flower growing in its cap. It has the sweet smell of rotten fruit and seems to attract its share of insects. If you were on this space, you could pick the mushroom up. Which you are not. Okay. So that was your uh, first manoeuvre. Yep. So my next manoeuvre is going to... I'm going to carry on walking. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested by this mushroom. Okay. So I'd like to go and investigate, please. First movement points there, so you can flip this over. There we go. Okay. You pick the blight cap mushroom and put it in your pouch. Ingesting it will reinvigorate you, but dried, it is a good ingredient for potions and scrolls. So we remove this card from the game, uh, and you get, where is it, where is it? A blight cap mushroom. So if you look on the other side, you can see that you can basically, on any point on your turn, you can, you know, discard this tile and you get two Vitae back. Awesome. There we go. Right, you've got one movement point left, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's by my car. Um, I will move to here. I think. Okay. Should keep me safe from the baddies Doesn't for a bit. Trigger another one. Right. So that is red initiative. Next is blue. All right, that's me. Yeah, me okay. and Ryan. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. We're both blue. Yeah, so, you go for it, mate. You go yeah, for it. Yeah, it's fine. up to you which order you go in. If you can't agree, it goes on the character's taunt value. But if you're playing a cooperative game and the players can't agree in which order they go in, you need to find a new group of players, I think. I think I'm going right. I mean, to do a very boring turn so I can just go and get it out of the way. Yeah, and go ahead. I should be terribly British and let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't forget, Andy, you have to apologise as well for it. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, I'm sorry. You go first, sir. My, uh, <laughs> my first action is going to be... I'm just going to walk two spaces. Yep. Okay. And I'm actually going to use my second uh, to meditate um, to get three uh, Vitae back. Yep. Because I want to be prepared. I spent a lot to climb up you here. Did. I want to yeah. be prepared for whatever's coming next. Yep. So I feel much better. And then next turn I can tackle whatever's coping whatever's over here, Jay. So. Yep. Right. Andy. Right. Well, I shall move one more to get myself into a position. Ooh. Okay, I was going to say, don't forget you can do this for free. Oh, I know. I'm only moving oh, one but space you can do anyway, it from there. I can still do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all part of the plan. Okay. So I'm kind of moving to get myself in position with the little sort of gribblies over there, but mm -hmm. I can still start chopping this tree down. So I shall continue to chop the tree down. Right. And because I focused, I basically roll another four dice. Don't yeah, I? it's four dice and you've got one extra, one free success. Yeah. Oof. Oh, gosh. That's, that's mince, isn't it? You guys tonight. Wow. I need to spend two Vitae. Two Vitae, now. yeah. There we right. go. So that's another six, another, another win. Another X. Right, and you're done? I'm done. I think so. Right, end of the round. Let's discard another fake card, spawn another Skitterer, and it's next round. So choose your, uh, choose your actions, and then we'll reveal the initiative card. So remember, these Skitterers might go before you. You don't know. Yep. So the, skitter, so the skitterers can move one or two spots. Yeah. So we shouldn't be shouldn't be in any danger this round, really, yeah. should we? Correct. As long as they go before you. Oh, don't forget we don't want to get too far away from the wagon. I was going to say, we'll did, go back at some point did, did one of you it. want to move the wagon on on your last turn? Oh, well, we do that. Yeah, probably did. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I was going to ask how we do that. Yeah, so, so yeah, on, yeah, on anybody's turn, once per round, you can move it two spaces. Um, right. Have you all chosen so, an action? I haven't yet. I have. uh, I will keep with what I've got, I think. We're going to have to get this tree out of the way ASAP. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to try and finish it off, and then yeah. So if me and Ryan tackle the tree, Sid, you do a bit of exploration, and then actually, no, you can't. You can't take them on, can you? Well, I I could take them on. Um, bit of a disadvantage, but I can. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking I hit story point K. Ooh, blood drop. But yes. Yeah, story yeah. point K. I've got decent decks. 
Yeah. Um, hit story point K, and then that's one, two, three, four. I think I can get to story point M as well. That's it looks like I might just sneak though. around the back. Sorry, Paul. Hide, hide in the bushes and sneak around the back. That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> That does put you in harm's way, though, mate. You're only going to be a couple of spaces away from the Gribblies. That'd be quite exciting, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially as you haven't got a weapon. Yeah, you go. Yeah, I, could, I, could go I could either go story point M, or I could actually hit story point L and stay out of the way of the Gribblies. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll take the extra manoeuvre again. Okay. And right. I'll, I'll head towards story point L. So, initiative card. It was the shuffle again, so I've reshuffled. And this time we've got... Is it a different one? It is. Right. So, in fact, this time... It's all changed. It's green first. Anybody on green? Uh, no. No. Uh, then it's blue. Yep. Yep. All right. Who's going to go and first? So just blue gets that extra maneuver here, or what? Uh, not that... in. No, that that is for later scenarios. But yes, that oh. that is what it would be, but not in this scenario. Uh, right. Well, I'll tell you what. I shall jump in and hit this tree one more time, and then I can okay. run away. Because you can do your actions in any order, can't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Cool. Right. Oh, I shall roll four dice. Four dice Hopefully with one free success. Bit, bit more... Now, now this is one success plus another dice. Oh, they explode, don't they? So yeah. Two explosions. So let's roll those. So I only need one more success, yeah, don't you I? Need one more. That'll there do. Go. Easily. Smashed right, so you've got all three X's on there. So it's cleared, but you still, so you've got a plus six when you do this card. Get but you it. still can't do this card until that's been done. Yeah, so I'll use my other action and just move to here and attract the Gribblies because then I can punch them. Mm -hmm. Right, so Ryan. You, yeah, yeah. You focused and moved. Right, okay, Ryan. Well, I'm going to move my walk do my walk maneuver yep. which is going to move two spaces but one of those is through a blood drop yep so, you so need i to need do... to do my reaction correct that's it two blue dice all right i've got my two blue dice let's see what we got that looks good to me right where was you rolling right here oh, oh I... you were rolling oh, right, these dice. right that's fine yeah no I'm upside down i just grabbed the closest pair of dice i i was zoomed in on your board and i was like I... What, where's he rolling let, let, you know what? <laughs> I could re-roll for the audience. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Right, so no doubt. I didn't want to look at the board upside down, so yeah, I'm looking at my now board, you have board upside down. At J. <laughs> J, yeah. yeah. J. Okay, so the root of the trouble. The tree was not cut down. It fell. Most of its roots broke free from the earth, moss and dirt still dangling from them. But some of the roots are left buried in the ground, keeping it keeping the tree in place. Chopping them away or digging them out will help you move the tree. So, uh, we can put this here, and I guess you want to flip the card over? I do, because I'm right there. Yeah. Uh, F. There, there we go. go. Right, so, similar test. It's a might test with six. You get bonuses if you've got a hand axe or a shovel, and if you succeed, I have the hand axe. you put an X marker on the card. So this is a free test, you might as well have a go. Alright, it's a might of six. Uh, yeah. It's a might, and your and might is might unfortunately one. one. <laughs> but you did focus. But I did focus, so I get two dice to roll here. Two dice. And I am rolling here in front of my own player board, so. Yeah. You need to roll some explosions. All right. right. I need to roll lots of explosions, so. That's one. Ooh. Right, so this is one success. And Plus an explosion. An explosion right? All right. Another explosion. Yes. Yo, two, three. Plus two for the hand axe, and if you spend one vitae for this, oh, you know hell yeah! Wow, he has done it! Right, beautifully okay. done, sir. I'm beautifully played. That, that axe, got a double arm mage there. <laughs> right, so now as a group, you now are now huge. allowed to do this card. Rock and roll, yes. and I've given you a plus six on that, so let's, yeah. let's do it. Right, uh, I think you're done, Ryan. Is that it? Uh, yeah, that was. Yeah my two moves yeah. and then i got yeah my, my right. walk so now it's the skitterers and the skitterers are doing a c which is they are snooping around so they are going to move two so we move them in numerical order based on the number on the base now these these came out at random but it just so happens that they are uh moving in the order that they are on the on the road 
uh, and they will basically move towards their nearest target which here is so it can go either here or here and i think it's up to you as players where you want it to go so i'll let you decide it's nearest that would be sid then because he's one closer i think yeah yeah is he going to be able to handle them or nope. do we need to... <laughs> i'm gonna have to run in <laughs> and start pumping things he can run away we need some cool bring time from you over here mate yeah yeah hulk smash uh, let's keep them on the road for now let's assume that the, the rogue is slightly vaguely hidden just yeah, for so enemy movement um if it's already in the area it can attack from it doesn't move otherwise it moves towards the area that it can attack from that requires the least amount of movement if there are two or more areas tied, it moves towards the one that allows it to attack a hero with the higher taunt value. And if two or more areas are valid, you may choose which of these areas it moves to. Okay, so there you go. Which one is it then? This one or this one? Oh. Put them on the road. Put them yeah, on the road. put them on the road. I'm good right. with that. Okay, so that's it. They've, they've moved. Uh, and now it's red. All right, time for me to get squished by all the blood drops. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to do a walk. Okay. Um, and I'll move into story point. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to do your reactive? So this is three oh, blue dice. Yeah. And yeah. you're looking for at least two successes to take no damage. Now that counts as a success in this scenario. So <laughs> no damage. And I'm going to get card K. Uh, where is K? There is K. Okay. So this is the sacred uh, woodcutter. A woodcutter is crouching under the trees, trying to hide. He whimpers as he sees you, eyes wide with shock. He keeps praying for the stars to protect him, as is the Burnhamite way. The axe in his hand seems to be of little use to him at the moment. So if you're on the same space as him, you can say, I need your axe, and you either give him two gold, or you do a will ability check difficulty six. Okay, well, I haven't got two gold. Nope. So, and it's a free action, is it's it? It's a free. One? It's a free check. Yeah. So you might as well try. I might as well try. So roll really me two, two dice. So... Yeah. There we go. So it's two successes, and you can buy two extra. But you're not going to be able to get six. To six. Yeah. No, I'll, yeah. I'll just leave it. Okay. So this was halfway through your first maneuver, I think. Yes, so I will now move into another blood drop. Mm -hmm. And do I activate L two spaces away? Uh, you do. But if you want to do your ability check, I'll get I'll, L out ready. Yeah. Good spot. So that's three dice. Oh, really? Seriously? What are you going to get? <laughs> Nothing. So we have our first damage. Right, every time you take damage... You take a Vitae chip off the top of your stack. Whoop. Just one of them. And then flip it over. Oh no. There we go. And do it again because you took two damage. There you go. So you've taken two damage. This You can't meditate to get this back. You can recover to get this back, which is a new action. Uh, sorry, it's a new maneuver. Um, and there is stuff that happens if you if you get all of your vitae chips wounded and then you get wounded further we'll cross that bridge when we get to it um it's unlikely to happen in this scenario right card You'd be surprised, Paul. yeah <laughs> an ominous light behind the trees in the direction of runedale you can see the sky is lit by pulsating red and blue lights birds and ephira butterflies fly away from whatever is causing them it is not the magical aurora you are used to seeing in the sky, but something more sinister and uninviting. So if you are on that space, you can flip that card over. Right. That was your first maneuver done. Uh, and then I've got one movement left. Uh, so I think I'm going to carry on getting away from these guys and just move into this space here. I think you've got a maneuver left, haven't you? Because your first uh, one took... was one two. Yeah, oh, of course. You can, get, you can get to there. So you've actually got I a whole get... maneuver left. Oh, I have. Um, I might as well. Ooh, yeah. Um, I'll move into M okay. and get another right. mushroom by the looks of it. Card M uh, is this one. Right. This is a circle of disgusting life. Repulsive, venomous centipedes crawl over and under a purple blight cap mushroom. 
The mushrooms are valuable, but gathering it without touching the horrible bugs is perhaps more trouble than it's worth. So you can, because you're on this space, you can just pick the mushroom right now if you wanted to. Uh, or if you had a shovel, you get the other option, but you need to decide which of those you're doing. Uh, Do you have I the shovel? The... You don't? Yeah. No, I don't have the shovel, so for no. the sake of story, I might flip it, just for some okay. comedy value. Yeah, if you want to flip that yeah. over. Right, so you did option B without a shovel. The nauseating mm -hmm. centipedes bite you with their acidic mandibles, each small bite hurting your hand. You try to concentrate on carefully picking the mushroom while you feel their venom burning your hands. You take a damage, but <laughs> you do get a blight cap mushroom. Which okay. Is one of these. So that can go. And the blight cap mushroom, you've already got one of them, so it, it does the same thing. Yep. It allows you to okay. recover Vitae. Right. Uh, I think you're done. Yep. Yes, yes, I am. You yep. are done. Right. That is the end of the round. So we flip over another fake card and go to the next round. This appears here. No more skitterers are going to appear now from that first card. Uh, all get to choose actions. Right. I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm if somebody that's better at chopping down trees than me can deal with the tree, yeah. I'm kind of interested in this flower over here because I already have one of those and I don't know what will happen if I have another one. So like, I, can, I can tell you what that flower does if you flip it over. There you go. So you can oh. use it any time to heal two damage. So another. So if I go over to the flower, we can get another heal. Mm -hmm. It's a hell of a Which, long way, though. And don't forget, that is a long got, way. you've got this card here. So there is actually a ladder between these two points here. Between the two Bs, right? Between mm -hmm. the two Ds, yeah. 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 Um, correct. Oh, uh, we haven't moved our wagon yet either, guys. Yeah, if somebody wants to, to move that, that's, that's fine. Can you shoot the Skitterer? Ryan, because you're three spaces away from it. Uh, I does the red block line of sight? It does not block line of sight. It blocks movement. Then, oh, then I can hit the skitter that's there. So I'm just going to double check on the line of sight rules, but I think you can. Uh, what does it say? There is something written here about that. Yeah. So ranged attacks require line of sight. In order for one figure to have line of sight to another, it must be possible to draw a line from part of the area to another area. It can't go through a solid barrier. Now, solid barriers are like walls and things like that. White lines and red lines are not solid barriers. I see uh, that. It cannot go through an area of higher level. So. I see. Where am I? So I'm on here, a two, that's a two, that's a, two, that's a one. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could actually stay there and zap it. <laughs> well, I don't want to let my magic power go to waste, so that sounds mm -hmm. like a good strategy to me. Okay. Right. Glad we clarified that. Has everybody chose their actions? Uh, I'm going to take extra maneuver this time. Okay, right. So let's reveal the initiative card, and we oh, have sorry. all of the characters first. So red first. Okay, uh, so... I was going to use my first action to try and recover some of this Vitae. Uh, uh, if we cover health, so what you do is you flip it recover. over and pop it back on top of your stack. Okay, I'll do that with one of my actions. So yep. that recovers two, is that correct? Yep. Okay, back on top. So and, that's your first manoeuvre. And with the second one... Oh. It's now, bear in mind that you think. know what the skitterers are going to do this turn. You've been quite lucky. They're going to do the C again. So all they're doing is moving. They're not going to attack. Okay. Uh, so I can get into their face without them attacking me. Is that right? Uh, that, that is true. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, what I'll do, actually, is I've got one, two movements. I'll, get, I'll flip card L. Okay. Just but to complete. You've got a blood drop oh, here on your way through. Blood drop, yep. Uh, which is three dice. So you can do better than last time. Yep, easily. That's and better. you get to flip yep. this card over. All right. So 
You walk towards the light and from the top of the ridge observe some ancient ruins and beyond them a hill that has been blasted open. On the hill you see Shantor Threebirds engaged in magical combat with an Itigri sorcerer. The red light you see comes from the hole in the hill, uh, the blue from their battle. At your feet you see a small glowing cube, perhaps left here by Shantor. So you gain a Cube of Annihilation card, which is this. Oh, that sounds dangerous. Okay. Now That's this, very dangerous. you can discard this to do an area attack. Uh, it's four dice, and if you roll one of those icons, um, it counts as two successes. Now an area attack, this didn't happen in our game this afternoon, so I'm just going to check this. Um, because I think it affects all enemies near you, and it doesn't actually affect uh, any friends. So this could be quite useful. Um, where is it? Where is it? I have seen it in here. Enemy movement, enemy turn. Here we go. Okay. So yeah, cube of annihilation, area attacks. Uh, an area attack followed by a number indicates the range of the attack. Each enemy within range of your hero is affected. Uh, the attack will not affect your hero or any other heroes. So basically, whenever you decide to use this Cube of Annihilation, uh, every enemy within one of you will take a four dice attack. Wow. Okay. All yeah. right. That sounds like good fun for the next couple of shots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> My strategy is firming up. Okay. So that was your first maneuver. Uh, yeah, I did my recover as my other maneuver. Oh, you did, yes, right. Okay, so that's red done. Next is blue, uh, which is me. Torax. So, uh, I'm going to do my little maneuver first, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna run. So, I'm gonna spend one of my V time, spend your writer, yeah, uh, which means I can move two squares, and yep. I'm going to. Punch Sorry. this spider in the face. Okay. Using my raging smash. Yeah. So that rolls two dice. No minuses because you're using your fist of thorax. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Oops. Come here, you. And roll that one. Oops. So just that one. So two successes then, I think. So Let's... two successes. You can buy more successes if you want to. Do I need to? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be two damage. These have got six health. Oh, God, these are quite hard, aren't they? They are, yeah. Um, I'll not buy anything yet. Okay. Because they're, they're not going to attack this turn, so it doesn't matter. I'll get my free punch, basically. So, no, I'll leave it as it is. Uh, so, I've just got a quick question in the chat for Phil or Max, uh, who are watching. Is there is a thing called hindered? And your hero is hindered if there are at least as many enemies as heroes in the area. So at the moment, you are classed as being hindered because there are okay. at least as many enemies as heroes. And it says when you're hindered, active ability checks have one fewer success. Your meditate maneuver restores one fewer and the recover maneuver heals one fewer damage. I don't think a, an attack counts as that. But all right. anything else you try to do in this area is going to be... Um, yeah, slight, slightly reduced in efficiency. So, right. Um, that is blue done. Now it is green. So, Ryan. Yeah, yeah the attack is not hindered. Uh, I didn't think it would be. So, I'm within three range. We already established that. I get two red dice to roll. So two red dice. Let's see what happens here. Yep. Oh, boy. Oh, now, man. if you were to spend the four Vita, that, that would actually kill the Skitter. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I can meditate let next turn. Let's just do it. Okay. So, this I is gone. I have one left, so I'm, I'm in good shape. <laughs> now, you've still got a maneuver for this turn, so you could just meditate now if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. I'll right. have three back. Three back. And now it is the Skitterers. So Skitterer number two first is going to go into here. Uh, then Skitterer number seven, one, two, three, four, one, two, is going to go over here. Uh, and then Skitterer number 10 goes into here. So if you were to move out of this area, Randy, you would take two unpreventable damage. Yeah, because sure. Because they've got, um, 
this provoke. Right, I think that is the end of the round. Yeah. Yes. So, discard a fake card. Everybody choose an action. Right, I think. So, a focus is only for skills. It's not for a cat attack, isn't it? Uh, correct. Yeah, it, it just okay. increases your abilities by one. Yeah, so in that case, I shall stay on Raging Smash. I don't think there's... I, hmm. If they're uh, going to keep lining up, does Raging Smash attack multiple targets? No. No. It's just a fancy name for punch it in the face. Yeah. Well, that's all right, I've got this. You got yeah, both? Because you... I can so shoot I... if you want to take the other one. But if you can handle both of them, then I can do something else. Yeah, you go for it, mate. I'm all right. I've got plenty yeah, of meat pie as well. <laughs> I'm going to head back towards you, Andy, and I want to drop this Cube of Annihilation round about there somewhere as well, if I can. I won't be able oh. to do it this round, though. It'll be next yeah. round before I can do it. Oh, we really need to finish this, this card, too, the G card. So you, you can actually do it this round, Sid. Because you can I? run. One, two, three. And then you can run. Or you can walk. Oh, of you course can, I can do you, the... You can yeah, do it. That's a good point. I forgot yeah. about that. Yes, um, let's do that. That sounds like good fun. Extra maneuver it is then. Right. Well, if everybody's chosen an action, I will reveal the initiative card. It is green monsters first, then red monsters, then red players. So, Sid, so, you're up. Sid, me. Right. Okay. So I will uh, run. So I'll spend one of these Vitae. Yeah. Uh, so one, uh, one to there, two three to there yeah and then i'll take the walk as my extra action just, just, One. just saunter out of the forest yeah <laughs> saunter out the forest looking a bit disheveled and um hit him with the hit these two bad guys with the cube of annihilation so you're going to use the cube of annihilation right okay yeah. so uh where did i find the rules for that yes yeah, so removing the cube of annihilation card from the game allows you to perform a magic area attack um now, I'm not sure if you roll for each enemy individually. So I will ask that question to Phil and Max in the chat. But roll first, and we'll, then we'll see, okay. by the time they've replied, we'll see whether that applies to both of them or, or just one of them. Cool. So, and I'm rolling how many four dice, red dice am I rolling? Four red dice. There you go. Have some okay. more dice. Right, here we go. Hold on tight. Okay, now this counts as two successes. Yep. Because of Two. that's what the card says. Yeah. Uh, it's three, once, it is in the rules. Okay, so it is in the rules. I just missed it. So you get an exploding dice from this one. Okay, which is another another dice yep. roll, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here it goes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So Andy, you know when you said you were going to deal with them? <laughs> I've outsourced it, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all me. Yep. I'm taking full credit. <laughs> <laughs> you normally do, mate. You normally steal yep. my steals. That's it. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I think you're done. So that's the Cubo Annihilation yep. gone. That was well used. Uh, yeah. Next is the that. Blue Monsters, and they are doing N, which is move to, and then a leg stab. Unfortunately, you run away. So we'll go one, two to come after you. Come back. Right. That's them done. Next is blue characters. All right, that would be me. Yeah, uh, I think I'm the only blue. No, I'm not. Tor. You're both blue, blue, so it's up to you. As well. Um, I mean, I don't. I can't move the tree on my own. I'll come up oh. towards you. I mean, I've only got raging smash, but so I mean, I could I can move like one, maybe two spots. But you could leave the tree to me. I could do it. So to do the tree, you need to be within one of here. Right, I can get there. I think. I know I can't. Well, why don't you go ahead and just go and see how far you can get? And... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can can, uh, can we swap um, equipment, Paul? Yep. Yeah, so I two take... characters are on the same space. You can swap uh, items, gold, whatever you want. I'm wondering, Andy, if I, as I'm squishier than you, I head backwards, um, grabbing a shovel off you on the way. Mm. And you head in to smash the last uh, um, skitter. 
Mm. Um, uh, well, the only reason I say that is because the complicated job is a might check, and I've got a might ah, three. Good and point. We need, whilst yeah. we've still got a plus six, I still need to roll pretty well. Um, I mean, we could swap kit if you want, if you want to give me the hook and rope. But well, I've got I've got plus two might, so okay. I'm not the weakest, but I'm not as strong as you. I am the weakest, so I should not be even trying. Um, I don't know really. Um, I've no objection to you going to do it. Can you get there? Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I can get there with an extra maneuver. Yeah, I think to get to G, right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. within one of yeah, G. Yeah. So here we'll do Once it. Get yeah. To there, yeah, yeah. Can you can you pick? Is picking up um, an action on the way through or not? No, no. no you can freely All swap right. items around as long as you're both on the same space. Well, you've got the hook and rope already, Sid, so... Is it, you might is it need the hook and rope, it. though? Yeah. Oh, hook oh, and rope, rope is ideal. Right. Get plus one, so you might yeah. as well give it a go. Yeah, fair enough, let's do that then. Well, but that's next turn. Fail, I can also... <laughs> that's next turn. So, yeah. who's going to... It's either Ryan or Andy to take a go next. I... I'll go... I'll move... Uh, one... Two... Actually, no, just the one. Just the one? I can't hit it, I can't no. hit it. So, so that's me. Okay, right. So you're done, and Ryan. Well, I feel like I should at least figure out what this purple flower is. So I'm just gonna walk. Which purple flower? Uh, this D. We don't have this, D out yet. This is this. This is the ladder between the two. Yeah. I'm sorry. B was the one I was looking. We don't have B out, do we? Uh, B. All B was. That was just the trigger point for when the skitterers appeared. Ah, that's all it was. It didn't yeah. do anything else. Okay. Well, I will have to climb out, so I'm going to do just two two walks. So that's yep. one, one, two, which two. I know I have to roll for. Yep. you got to make an agility check of four. Your agility with is... The, oh, with my two. normal agility, it's two. Not gonna do it. Not gonna no. do it. So, I'm, so you're, you're stuck at the top. <clears throat> oh, but there's also a blood drop on here, so you need to make a um, a reaction like check of two. Re reaction, yeah. So that's two blue dice. Mm -hmm. Okay. All that's right. Fine. That's good. Yep, but that's I'm stuck good. here. I'm just gonna chill here with the ladder. Right. I think that's the end of the round. So another fake card is gone. Choose your actions for the next round. Right. I'm, I'm going to commit to the plan that we suggested and uh, yeah. head over uh, there. As am I. I shall punch the Gribbly in the face. I'm going to try to climb down a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear that often in many no. fantasy <laughs> novels, do you? The big mighty hero is going to go and smash the Gribbly. The thieves going to try and undo the trick wire. What are you doing? I'm climbing down a ladder. <laughs> I'm going to do my best effort to get down that ladder. You own that ladder, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. Have you all chosen actions? Yes. Okay. So it is the Skitterers first. And they are doing cool. action N, which is move two and then leg stab. So Ooh, ow. it mo moves into this area. Now, the Skitterer will attack the character with the highest taunt value, but... Because you're both in the same area, the other character can choose to take it on them if they want to. Um, you don't want to in this case, form. but I'm just saying you you could. You've got highest dex, Sid, so you've got more chance of avoiding it, haven't you? Uh, I have, yeah. Oh, in fact, this one is, yeah, this one is based on agility, not might. Okay, so you might want to do it. Yeah, Sid, you so, take it. You got more okay. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll lead in and save my friend. So, Just this one, Sandy. Don't get used to it. <laughs> this, this is basically a, a reaction check. It's very similar. It, you're going to take two damage, you make an agility check, and for every success, you reduce the damage by one. Okay, so, so three dice. Three dice. Uh, here we go. Ah, I take it all. You take all uh, of the damage. <laughs> oh, well done. That plan yeah. worked then, didn't it? I so, fumble it completely. It comes okay. from that pile first. If that pile Reef. was empty... It would then come from your previously spent 
Vito. You know, I'm going to roll that. I'd actually, I'd have, I'd have been all right. <laughs> I've only taken one. There you go. <laughs> right. Pushed me that under the bus. You did. Done. I did. So now it is initiative red. Oh, that's definitely not me. That's okay, that's me, me. So am I going to take up another you, one damage? You will take for one this unpreventable space. damage for moving out of that area. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, this is going well. That's a bus reversing back over you. <laughs> beep, beep. Uh, I can hear you. That's my two, oh, can you? two moves. Cool. And uh, I'll move another two of my action yeah. maneuver to there. And you're going to try this check? Yep. So it's a might check. You need 12. You've got a plus seven. Six because right. of this. <laughs> and one yeah. because of your hook and rope. Okay, so a might check is two dice for me. Two dice. You need five successes here, mate. That's uh, it's yeah. pretty. It's asking a lot. There's well, two. That's one and another one, and an explosion. Well, and another do, one. Yeah. Two successes on there. Jobs are good. Oh, oh, oh one <laughs> short. Just man. Short. Short mm, by one. Right. Right. We'll focus next, go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's blue next. That's me. Okay. And yep. Go for it. Me? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'm going to try to climb down this ladder again. <laughs> <laughs> this time I get three dice. Because I focused it. What? All right. I need what, four? Well, there's, there's two. Right, so there's two, and it's exploded. Yeah. Okay, so two, and you can buy another two if you want to. I guess I'm going to, or else yeah. I'm stuck up here again forever. Okay. <laughs> now, were you choosing to walk or run? I guess walk. I'm just going to walk. Yeah. So that's one of your movement points. You do have an extra movement point. Yeah. Come here. I guess I'm going to stay where I'm at. Because, well, let me move one back. Okay. If these things come down the path, I can shoot at them with magic. Yeah, nah, don't worry, I'm gonna kill it. Don't worry, right, you might, you're probably gonna kill it, and that's fine. Right, off you go then, Andy. Watch me eat my words now. So that's three attack dice, isn't it? I know it's two attack dice, two because I'm, I'm yeah. punching it. Okay, remember that this is like still a tutorial scenario, your characters haven't got much in the way of items or superpowers yet, so they're, they're still fairly weak. Uh, no. Okay, we'll roll roll that as an additional one. So I will buy that's one, two successes. Two damage. You can buy two more if you want to. Yeah, why not? Okay. I'll buy two. There we go. So, so that's taken on four, four damage. Hits. Okay. Still more dead. Right. And I think that's the end of the round. Paul, mm -hmm. just one question before we move on. Yep. Um these mushrooms I uh, I picked up. Yep. Can I munch one of them on this round, or do I have to wait for our next round to turn some of these red damage? So Is that what these, they're for? These will only restore Vitae. Ah, okay. okay. Gotcha. I, can, I yep. can heal you, though. Yeah. Okay. So you, cool. you would have to either get healed from the, um, the Star Lotus, or choose the Recover yep. action to get to right. back. Gotcha. So, okay. Right. So next round, choose your actions. Uh, focus sure. for me. Yep, I'm also. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna extra maneuver. I'm gonna carry on punching this scribbly. Right. It is my lot in life. So it is red monsters first, followed by red characters. Are we gonna have the tree moving? I hope so. Uh, so. I'm on a green action, guys. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't think anybody's on red. Nope, nobody's no. on red. Right. I was just assuming it was you, Sid. Uh, green <laughs> yeah. monsters. Oh, now it's green characters. Okay, so, so it is now me. It's you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm, I'll, I'll focus, um, yep. and that gives me one, two, three dice. Three dice plus seven. Plus seven, right, okay. Let's have a go. There we go. You need one more. So you just spend right. a day. Or is that spend your last one? I uh, know I've got one more underneath it. Oh, okay, right. Here we go. Just did it. Job. So we oh. flip over. Good man. No, we reveal story cards, dot and diamond. Right, okay. So let's look through the deck for dot. 
All right, I'll take diamond in a minute. The road is clear. You painstakingly chop the roots and branches off the wisp tree so it is no longer stuck and cut the tree. Then, using the hook and rope, you drag the trunk of the heavy conifer to the side of the road. Legionary the Toggrel grunts happily, anxious to continue. Somebody want to click on the overlay button? Because this is quite cool when this happens. Overlay. On the card here. Oh, we're down there. there overlay. We there we go. Oh, right, yay. so you can see what that's done to nice. the map. And don't forget, somebody moved Toggrel and the wagon at some point. Sure, we're just right. going to move in one space, right? Uh, I do, I think, didn't it? Oh, because of this, one, two, three. No, it can move two. It can yeah. move two? Yeah, let's, let's just move so. him now, get him, get him yeah. moved. Yep, because, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, we've got to get him to the end of the track, so we might as well get him shifted as quickly as we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Okay, next card. Uh, Sorry, Paul, can I eat one of my mushrooms, please, while I'm... Uh, yeah, if you want to. After that, get, hard, just that, get, that hard work I've just done. Just move it away and put two Vito back. Right, there's been an explosion. It looks like a firework, but slower moving. A trail of ruby fire rises, whistling into the sky from somewhere beyond the forest, and then hits the middle of the road further up. The loud explosion brings with it smoke, stone fragments, and the smell of burnt wisp trees. Okay, so a couple of things have happened. Um, all heroes and enemies in the area shown have been caught in the explosion. Is anybody there? It's this I one. I don't think so. Yeah, it's here. Okay. That's Andy, isn't it? No, I'm, there's, a, there's a line here. So oh, I see. Yeah. It's, it's here, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, so each hero in the area would have taken damage, um, and we remove this card from the game, and then we get another story card. Right, story card square is this one. Right, there is a crater in the road. The stone and cement of the road erupts from the ground, and the air is filled with dust and crackling magical energy. Once the dust settles and the energy subsides, you see the large crater that the explosion has left behind. I'm going to click the overlay button. And that has changed the board. So you can see how that's going to change things. Specifically, it's the dots. If you look at the dots, you will see that you can no longer get the wagon through that area. Oh boy. Okay. Right. That changes well, things. <laughs> on Annie's turn, you can reveal card N. Because you are within two of N. So you were just outside of the explosion. Uh, right, is it still your go, Sid? Uh, no, I think I'm done. You're all I've done? Used, uh, yeah, I think I've right. done all my manoeuvres. So. So I didn't, yeah, I focused and I... No, I haven't moved, have I? Uh, no, you haven't. You haven't done your No, maneuver. I haven't. So, in which case, I will just walk um, and I'll walk one to, oh, to here, yeah. Here to I think yep. that's... Yep. Right, and now it's the Skitterer's, so this Skitterer attacks, it's doing uh, a leg stab. So Andy, reaction check, agility. Two damage coming in. You've only got one agility. Nope, so you take two damage. There you go, let me flip those over. Right, okay. Uh, and then it's blue characters. Yep, I'm one of them. Um, what I'm doing is maneuvering, so I'm just going to catch up to you guys. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you're doing two walks, so you have to yeah. take a damage because you've left this area. Yeah. That's all right, but we get to reveal card N. Yep. So search the deck for N. Okay, so this would... is an impassable crater. The magical explosion oh, cracked a smouldering crater in the middle of the road. You hear Legionary whimper at the strange magical stench. For Legionary to pull, pull Birdie over the crater, you will have to build a bridge from Slave Thorn Leaves. So once you're right, on... Right. Okay. Yeah, we can flip it, can't we? Uh, only if you're on it. Oh, on it. Not... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm one short. Because it's got a zero on it. you got to be on it. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Andy. 
Sorry, uh, my mic decided to turn itself off. All right, um, that's all right. You're back with us? Right, yes. Yes, I am back with you. Apologies for that. It just sort of decided, no, I'm not playing anymore. Right, uh, yes, I'm going to punch the Gribbly. Yep. And why two not? attack dice. It's only got two right, health two left. Dice. That'll yeah. do. That'll do it. Okay. And then you've got a manoeuvre. I have got a manoeuvre, so yeah, I'll move to here. Sorry, I was okay. going to uh, try and um, reveal N before, but uh, obviously my mic had decided it wasn't uh, interested <laughs> okay. in that, that approach. So, Right, uh, I think everybody's done. End of the round. And then next round, choose your actions. Oh, have you moved? You have moved the wagon this turn. Yes, you have. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to focus and see if I can help build this bridge. Yeah, me too. So I reckon it might need a bit of heft. Yeah, I probably. I'm not the strongest person here, but well, we'll see. Right. Everybody chosen an action? Yep. Okay. Right. Initiative card is red first. Not me. Not me either. Off you go, Sid. Sorry. Yep. Sorry, I was muted. Um, I'll take an extra maneuver um, and I'll walk twice to get to the bridge building so one two yeah and then, and then uh, remember you can exceed one. the limit of an area as long as you're moving through so one and then two yeah. presumably puts okay. me and on the crater card over so right here we go here's how it works only a hero that is in an area containing a blood drop can do this test it's a might test difficulty four. If you have an axe, it's plus two. If you have a shovel, it's plus one. If you succeed, you take an X marker and you put it below your character board. Then what you do is you bring those markers back to this space. And once there are four of them on there, the bridge has been built. Okay. That sounds like, that sounds like a job for me. Because mm -hmm. I have a shovel and a load of strength. Yeah, I could probably actually help with this one too, since I have a uh, the axe. Yep, that's perfect, boys, because I spent all my turn. So <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Um, yeah, I I've used both my maneuver arms, so I'll uh, hand over to you guys. Okay, so it is uh, green next, and then blue. But I think you're both on blue. Yeah, so it's up to you which yeah. order you go in. Uh, well, can we each reach a. Uh, I think there's only yeah, there's two blood markers that within range. Mm -hmm. I can get to this one if you can get to the bottom one. I can, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let's well, just do that. Let's hop yeah, over if, you, there. if you want to do your turn simultaneously, just to save time, you both choose the walk yeah. maneuver, but and then you both. Blood. We still have to do the blue die for blood, right? You do, yeah. Oh. So two damage to Torax, and one to me. Two, oh man. Which yeah, means I have no right hand left, by the way. Neither do I. I'm, right, I'm, okay. I'm out of it now. So does that mean we're passed out? No, no, no. It just well, it just means you're a, you're a bit tired. It means you can't use Vite to uh, boost your dice. Okay. Uh, but you can still do this test. This might. It's test. a might test of four, right? Yeah, might test of four. If you've got a shovel, it's plus one. If you've got an axe, it's plus two. So I'm going to roll two dice because of my focus, and I have plus two to this roll because of my axe. Yeah. Hey, there four. Go. Nice. And so I've got you've, six. you've collected some leaves and stuff. I've just got a six. Put a, yeah, so we just hold on to the X marker, right? Yeah, and then when you go back to the middle of the crater, that's when you can deposit the X markers. Can you hold more than one X marker at a time? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Paul, if I like roll these explosive dice and I get like eight successes, does that count as two X's just to nope. save time? No. Nope. <laughs> Good try, Andy. So, did you get an X? I got. Yeah, I think we both did, right? Did you get one, Andy? Uh, an X? No, I yeah. didn't take one yet. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Right. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, we just got to move our uh, wagon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, move the wagon. So one, and then next rolling, round. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, choose your actions. Uh, I'm going to focus. I'm going to do the same thing, but in reverse. Can we 
take damage now, Paul? Yeah, so what, what happens, happens now, if you were to take damage under, you would have to start flipping these over. Oh, OK. Right? If you That's ever right. take damage and you can't because everything's flipped over, yeah. you actually then become wounded. Ooh. And if you ever become wounded, uh, and when you become wounded, you get a little bit of your stuff back. And if you become wounded yeah. a second time in the same scenario, that's when you're exhausted. And that's when you're effectively okay. removed from that scenario. Okay, so that's bad news. Okay, well, I've, got, I've still got plenty of, uh, plenty of stock there, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to park up and do the same thing again. Okay. Yeah, me too. Everybody chosen actions? Yep. yep. Right, initiative card is red first. Nobody's on red, then blue. All right, well, why don't you do it simultaneously again? Yeah, yep. why not? Doing the same thing. All dice. I get two dice, and I get plus two to my die roll. So this time I did not get it. Did not get it. No. Uh, yes, I have. There you go. Have an X. Right. Thank you. So you two have both done your ability checks, but you've still got your uh, maneuver. Will, can I move directly from where I am to the thing? Or is there a line in the way? I know There's I a line in the way. You could there. run and move two. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I'll not run. I'll just move the one. Oh, move that's one. okay. Okay. I'm just going to see where I am and try again next turn. Yep. Okay. Um, there's no monsters, so it's Sid, you next. Okay, so I will uh, take my walk action and move to where Andy was. Mm hmm. And then uh, roll you my three Give it reaction a dice. You don't take any damage from the okay. sharp leaves. Uh, I've got a focus. Um, so that gives me three dice to try and get four on. Yeah. There you and go. It does. Nice. So between you, you have four X's. All right, uh, and then you can move the toggle. It can move to here, but it can't move here because they're one one capacity. So it's right. going to go round. End of the round. Next round. Choose actions. Uh, so I'm. I think extra maneuver feels like the right thing right now. Yeah, me too. Since we've got four X's, even without mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay, so everybody's chosen. We have uh, red first. Okay, uh, I'll just hit my walk action to take the X back to the bridge. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move that X and put it on here. And then with your extra maneuver? Uh, with my extra maneuver, I would like to recover, if I okay. may. So you flip them over and you put them back onto there. Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, next is blue. Yep. So I'll move into the middle. No, you're green, Andy. Am I? Oh, I am. Sorry, yeah, apologies. Green. It's Ryan on blue. Yep. So I have my 1x to bring back. Yep. Um, how many people can be in that? Uh, two, two. Only two people can be in there, though. Yeah. All right, so I'll cool. come in there with my first. So I'll walk in. Yep. I'll deposit my x, and then yep, on that. Uh, second maneuver will be to walk out. Okay. So there we go, two maneuvers. Right. And Andy? I will basically do the same thing. So I'll walk in, dump my X's, and then walk right. out again. Okay. So that's easy enough. Well, before you walk out again. Oh, yeah, we've got to trigger this first. Yeah, so we? once there are four or more markers on this card, we need to reveal two more story cards. Whoa. So the first story card <clears throat> I'm going to reveal is this one, which is a makeshift bridge. The bridge of branches and leaves might just be enough to get Legionary the Toggle and Birdie the Wagon over to the other side. As you are finishing the bridge, you hear the sound of more skitterers in the woods. Oh, great. Do this, do this overlay. There we go. So, yeah, that's changed the area to have four dots on it. Oh, that's um, good. And then I'm also going to reveal card. Uh, it's this one. More beasties. More beasties. Ambushed. As you have finished uh -oh. the bridge, you hear the eerie sound of multiple legs moving rapidly in the woods. Skitterers are connected to a hive mind, but they do not seem to be protecting a nest or hunting for prey. Someone is using the skitterers as soldiers, and you are their enemy. So we're going to spawn 
Uh, one there and one there. So that's one here and one, I believe, there. Okay. Oh. And remember, they don't get to act on the turn that they appear. So, mm. right, Andy, you've got your second maneuver. Uh, I sh shall. Do I know? Because I need move one. So I moved mm -hmm. out. Yeah, or but you've chosen extra maneuver. So... Oh, I see. That's right, yeah, because the board's think, changed. Right, I okay, think you yeah, moved sure. one in, didn't you? Uh, I, will I will meditate, actually, and get some um, B tied back. Okay. Right, so end of the round. Choose your actions for next round. I think we're going to be punching things again. I need to yeah. take a minute to relax, so I'm going to take an extra action again, extra maneuver. I think I'm going to try a less than optimal attack, given that they're so close. Um, so, Sid, you're attacking. You're attacking. Yeah. Well, uh, Paul, if I if I attack, I yeah. still get to do my meditate, correct? Yes, you you still do one of the maneuvers. So, yeah. Then that'll be fine. Okay. Right. Uh, reveal the initiative card then. It is blue first. All right. Ooh. I can. Um, can I, I do these in green. any order? Yeah, you're green. Oh, I'm green. Never mind. Yeah. I'm so used to being blue. I know. <laughs> Every other thing I have is blue. No, it's, so it's Torax. Yeah, quick, quick note down at 2033 on the 14th of December, Torax is taking through. the first turn in a round. <laughs> now, <laughs> the problem is if I go into there, I'm going to get hurt by the leaves. That's a problem. And on 2034, on the 14th of December, Torax is scared of the plants. <laughs> <laughs> Not scared, just weighing up his options. But I'm just going to bundle in anyway. Okay, so I get to roll one of these reaction one of those. dice. Yeah, Ooh. that counts as one. So you just take one damage. One damage, okay. So do I... Do, I presumably, I, by default, I take the existing Vitae I've got rather than yes. turn the others off. Yeah, yeah okay. only when that's gone do you use that stuff. Yeah, sure, okay. okay. Right, it's time for Punchy Punchy. It is. Two dice. Two dice. Three hits. Three. Have some of that. Okay, so I'll one, do. two, three. There you go. So you're done. So that was blue. Next, it's green. Now it's me. Now it's you. So let's uh, zap that one that's right next to me. Yep. Now, can I do my uh, maneuver before I do my attack? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to meditate All first. Right. I, I do. And then is my uh, Star Lotus a free action? It's a free action. You do that whenever. I'm going to do that. And then I can yep. put these back on top. Yep. After I heal them. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get rid of that Star V star plant lotus thing all right now that i'm feeling much better now yep. i will try to attack him Take i get breath. two dice we're on the same level within line of sight so i could do up to three you could would three kill him no it wouldn't nope. would it so i might as well just do one anyway and be happy with that okay yeah. yeah if i can't kill it i might as well wound it for next turn yeah uh, so that's blue, that's green. Now it's the Skitterers, and the Skitterers are doing action C, which is move. So this one doesn't need to move. This one moves into... Oh! Right. Oh, it can't. It can't move in. So it's not attacking this turn, but if it was attacking this turn, it would actually be able to attack. Okay? So the rules are for melee attacks that you have to be in the same area as your opponent, but if that area is full you are allowed to do a melee attack from an adjacent area, okay? So it doesn't apply in this case, but if the Skitterer was attacking this turn, it would actually be able to attack. So yeah, that's how the rules work on attacking into spaces that are full, but only if it's full. Hmm. So yeah, it doesn't move. Right, that is the Skitterer is done. Uh, then it's red. Okay, is... um, so... I wish I'd taken focus now, but never mind. Um, I'm going to try and calm the trogrel to allow it to carry on moving. Okay. Um, 
So I'll move one position back. Temporarily. I, yep. I yeah. believe I then roll uh, two of my will willpower, is it, Dave? Uh, it's, it's a willpower check, difficulty five. Your will is two. Two, but yeah. You get plus two successes because you're the one that calmed the toggle in the first scenario. Yeah. So and three, so I need three from two dice. Yeah. And I didn't make it. <sighs> okay. Okay. Uh, you've still got to use your other movement point. Uh, I can't. Oh, hang on. Am I even allowed to do that? Have why I do broken to, something? Why do you need to calm the toggle? Uh, so I could carry on moving it mm. past the baddies. In fact, Max has just po posted in the chat that, Ryan, you could have a free check on trying to calm the toggle as well. Oh, it's a free check? It's a, Yeah, all checks are free unless it says otherwise. Oh, well then, heck yeah, I want to yeah, do that. Have, I didn't realize have a go it was at a doing free it. Break. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Because um, you've got three dice. I do have three dice here for this, so. Yeah. Thank you, Max. Ooh, oh, well, oh, that's five. Good. So, uh, yeah, so Sid, Look did you want to do something different? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, in which case I will then, I'll do the attack, Yeah. which is what I was set up for. Um, I'll move, oh no, I can't. Oh, so this is where you're adjacent. Square oh yeah. Of melee yeah. You, attack you could stay in. here yep. and you could hit this. Yep, I will do that. So okay. I'm rolling not two dice because I'm using a hook and a rope. So I'm just rolling one dice. No, it's still two dice, but it's minus oh. one off the total number of successes. Oh right, okay. You just steal my kill again. Not yet. He did one damage to it. He just gave it a little peck. There you go. Do we want to move the wagon now? You want to move the wagon because yeah. the toggle is calm. Yes. Two spaces. Okay. Two. Now, there the other thing I there. may not have mentioned about the wagon is that it does oh, not oh. trigger story points. Okay. Okay. Oh, sure. Only only characters trigger story points, not not the not the wagon. Right. Okay. I think that is the end of the round. Yep. Okay. Next round. Choose your actions. Uh, punchy, punchy for me. Yeah, I'm gonna keep on blasting. Um, I'll stay on punchy, punchy. Do you know what and... I'm the story, Sid? Well, I can stick it. I can trigger that anyway, so I can take a stab and then okay. use my action to uh, okay. to walk. So I'll 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 stick with that. Okay, everybody got actions. Yep. All right. Uh, red characters first. Uh, yep. So I will. Uh, Take a cheeky stab at the one engaged with Andy. Mm -hmm. And one. So I lose. That becomes zero, doesn't it? Unless I uh, buy something. Unless some. you spend Vitae, yeah. But, you know, Andy's chosen the attack. Yeah, maybe Ray. So... Don't worry. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it. And then, in which case, I will move and trigger story point P. Story point P. Okay. Uh, which is this one. Uh, the Skitter of the Skitterers. Approaching your destination, you see more Venorian Skitterers emerging from the woods. It is becoming clear they are under the magical command of someone, probably the same evil that Shantor told you about. So we're going to have two more Skitterers. Um, oh, man. One there and one there. So those aren't going to act this round. Okay. Okay. In which case... I think I can I can I calm the toggle this you turn can, or not? You've not tried that this round, so you can. Uh, in which case, I'll try and calm the toggle to mm -hmm. allow it to carry on moving. Uh, so that's two of these. Guys. And I'm just going to double check the victory conditions of the scenario because I remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just want to check because it says if at the end of any round the toggle and the wagon are in the rightmost road, the one where the story point P is located, then you win. Yeah. So even if the skitter is on the board, as long as the wagon is here, at the end of the round, you win. Oh, right. All right. Well, I think there's a good chance of that. Let's do it. Go for well, it. I think I've, 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 I've rolled three. I get two from the card, so I think I make the check. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I like it. So you can move it. Right. Well, 
let's obviously put the wagon on P. The game the game is not finished yet. If if Max is watching and thinks, oh wait a minute, that shouldn't happen, they will make some changes to the scenario. But certainly for tonight, that's this is what we're using. And we don't have to even like examine P then. It just we just have to get there. Actually, yeah, because Sid would have triggered it by moving to where he is. That's what I'm saying. I did. That's, did why, that's why I moved there. Oh, yeah. so there's a spawn. Sorry, yes. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Apologies. Right. So, uh, if you're all done, it is now blue. Which That'll is... That'll be me. Andy. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll punch this thing. Why not? Finish this I'm one off. For it. Yeah. Two dice. Uh, one one an explosion. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, that's enough, yeah. <clears throat> done. Okay. Back in, and then your manoeuvre. Uh, I shall step back onto the road and get out of this bush. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't like the bushes. Uh, right, next is the Sweet. blue monsters, and again, you've been quite lucky. They are, they are snooping around. So this one moves into here. Uh, this one can get somewhere by moving one, and this moves into here. I think that area can take four, yeah. There you go. That's them done. And then green, which is Ryan. Uh, I mean, I might as well hit it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I only get two of these dice. Come on, two dice. So we can roll that well again. I'll spend four. You spend four oh. to deal four. To, yeah, I bet you're wishing you did that extra one last time. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> It's on five. So, yeah, that is the end of the round, but you have won the scenario. Hooray! So, Go team. There have been 11 cards in the pile, unfortunately. So oh. you are one short of the best success. But now I'm going to read the conclusion. Um, conclusion, here we go. Right. You made it past the obstructions and have outpaced any remaining skitterers. More appear from the tree line as you rush off up the road towards the rising smoke. You make it to the hill where you can see the sky aglow with red and blue light. It is coming from beyond the ruins of the ancients which mark the forest downhill. You hear faint yells, curses and blasts, all seemingly coming from a magical battle being fought not far from here. Then you see a Nitegri sorcerer rise into the sky on a flying disc, casting evil red energy down at Shantor as she levitates herself up, countering with blue magic. Legionary starts to whine miserably. You do your best to calm him down before going to help his mistress. Just then you see the evil Nitegri cast a magical bolt your way. You hear the whistling sounds and you realise you must run for your lives. Count the number of discarded fate cards, which is 11. Um, consult the table below to see how well you did. And additionally, the quicker you'd completed this scenario, the more advantages you will have in the, in the next. So, 11 to 13. If only you had got here sooner, you could have taken a cover in the ruins ahead. The bolt hits Birdie's backside, blowing the wagon into small pieces. You manage to cut Legionary away from the remains and save him, and you also save the Runic Plate from Bernie's destroyed wreck. In the next scenario, you will start with three Skitterers on the map at the start. Oof. But that is the end of scenario two. And again, what you would do is you would take these characters and all of their equipment and everything they've got forward into the next scenario. Uh, and tutorial three introduces all of the rest of the rules of the game. So by the end of tutorial three, you, you know everything and tutorial four is effectively the first scenario with like absolutely everything in. Um, but there you go. Um, let, let's go through what people thought of it. Let's start with you, Ryan. How, how was this compared to the first scenario? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a little more uh, engaging with the addition of the combat. Mm -hmm. um, like we could interact more with our environment. And I was a little, after I played the first scenario, I wasn't sure how combat would feel compared to the way the, the rest of the game feels, but I think right. that, I really liked it. I think it, the fact that you can still do your maneuver plus everybody has like a special kind of attack um, based on whether you're carrying a weapon. Like, I like that I didn't need like a weapon yeah. to cast my magic spell. Like, it, it's just, it's an interesting way to look at it and I think it fits the rest of the game. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you've still only unlocked three of your you know the, the next one will unlock and they're actually they're actually here if you wanted to have a sneak peek <laughs> <laughs> uh 
what, what will actually happen in tutorial three, I think this happens at the start of tutorial three, I might be wrong, is you actually get to choose which one of these you want. So there is customization Ooh. of your character during the campaign. You would get one of those to start with. And again, what I mentioned earlier on, literally you guys are walking around with none of your own equipment. You've grabbed a few right. shift items from the back of the wagon. So all, although you are, you know, fantasy heroes, you're not tooled up yet. You don't have your equipment. And when you start adding all of the equipment with like armor and weapons and everything else, that's when the, you know, that's when the numbers basically get, get bigger. Um, so what about you, Sid? Oh, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I enjoyed the first session a lot. This combat, I thought, added quite a lot extra to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I quite like the survival element where you've got nothing to start your character with. So you're yep. building that character, evolving that character. No, I'm really looking forward to where Tutorial it's, it's 3 and the rest of the I, game I, goes. I played this character this afternoon and thought, oh, right, I'm some cool little stealthy rogue. And I've got magical abilities because I can see the purple hand is glowing. And I've got this dagger. I'm going to be sneaking around. And I went... Oh no! Wait a minute. I've I've got I've I've got nothing. Uh, I mean, I I had the axe, and it was like, what does this axe do? Minus one damage, and I'm like, seriously? And it's like, yeah, you you've got nothing. <laughs> just... Yeah, it, it's a, it's a nice way to play. It, it may, I think it gives you a little bit more challenge. As you see, you're you're quite weak, so you've got to try to avoid yeah. it a little bit and and play it play it, play it your character really. No, yeah. I really enjoyed that. Cool. Uh, Max has just put in the chat that by the end of the campaign. You will actually have eight actions. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. So it, oh, it wow. really does increase. And although we have seen combat tonight, we've seen very simple combat with skitterers that actually didn't attack very much. Now I've played a full scenario of this with much bigger, tougher monsters that actually really hit you back, and yeah, it, it, it's much more involved. I think I think the foliage probably dealt more damage than the skitterers. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> So what about you, Andy? How was it playing Torax? I enjoyed it. It was good. It was a big lumbering Hulk-like affair. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that he seemed to be more, probably the most useful in terms of the challenges because it's a lot of the challenges seem to be very based on strength. Yep. So it, like you need to be in like three different places at once. Yeah. So that was a bit, a bit now, difficult. Obviously, fighting off the skitterers and doing the yeah. Um, the tree yeah. was obviously very difficult. You can't do both. So one of the reasons for that is Torax in Scenario 1 is probably the weakest character. Yeah. So in Scenario 1, movement was really important and people mm -hmm. were having to rush around the pub. And players who played Torax in Scenario 1 were like, oh, well, everybody else got to do lots of cool stuff. And I kind of didn't get to do much. And I think the way that the game is what i'm hoping because scenario one takes you about an hour an hour and a bit i think most people when they get this game they're going to play scenario one they're not going to pack it away they're going to they're going to play scenario two straight afterwards and i hope the person the person who plays torax in scenario one might feel oh i didn't do very much then oh scenario two all of a sudden I i'm doing loads of stuff so hopefully yeah yeah uh tutorial three is still in progress it's it's been it's been designed it's been tested and changed two or three times already uh, it isn't publicly available yet tutorial three um but you know tutorial three will definitely be appearing on this channel once it's ready uh, may maybe closer to the um maybe closer to the to the, the the release of the game which as i say will be will be sometime next year so this was a sneak preview everything you see here is a prototype Although I can tell you that <clears throat> obviously this artwork looks very nice. This is pretty much how it's going to look. This is pretty much finished. The card design, uh, all of the artwork on the card design and the general look of the game, that's finished. Uh, the player boards are still being worked on. But if you watched uh, the first video, then obviously this is, uh, this is a big improvement on, on what we had in, in the first scenario. Have you three got any questions before we finish things up? I don't think so. Okay. No. Good play. No, nothing from me. Okay. Well, right. Thank you, Paul. Well, yeah, no, thank you very much. Always good to speak to you. And if I don't speak to you, any of you before the holiday period, obviously best wishes to you and your families. And the same to you. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Same to you, Paul. Thank right. you very much. I will say goodbye to you on Discord. Thank you very much. There we go. That's that done. And I will say goodbye to everybody for watching. So yeah, thank you very much if you're watching this live. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed it.
Uh, hello to everybody who is watching this afterwards. I'm pretty sure when this game eventually goes on Kickstarter, there'll be lots of people watching this video. So hello to you. Uh, it'll be months after this went live. But yes, thank you very much to Max and Phil for being in the chat uh, and helping me out with a couple of questions. And obviously to everybody else for watching. That's everything. I'm going to say goodbye now. Uh, and yeah, keep an eye on the Agamonia Facebook page. There is a Facebook page for Agamonia. Uh, there is a website. There's a Twitter account as well. So yeah, basically, I'll, I'll, I'll be mentioning it now and again, but the best place to go for all of the information is on those sites uh, and on the BGG forums as well. There's a community thing going on, telling a load of background story to the world and, and what's going on. Because, yeah, the designer's got a whole world here uh, with a load of stuff that's, that's actually happening. But, yeah, I'm going to say goodbye now, go downstairs and, uh, yeah, have some ice cream. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon. <laughs>